At this point, we've talked about a lot of specifications about a digital circuit. So we talked about specifications for the output DC conditions, we specified uh, input conditions, we specified maximum currents we've, on the outputs, maximum currents on the, on the power supply pins, we've, we've talked about quiescent current, AC characteristics. So the question is, for a particular digital circuit, where do you find these specifications? Well, it turns out you find them in what is known as the data sheet. So every digital circuit has a data sheet. And the data sheet will tell you not only the specifications, that you need to look at, but it also tells you things about the functional behavior, okay, so what it actually does. So when you think about like an inverter, it's very simple what it does, but as digital circuits get larger, more complex, you need a better description of how the thing works. So you'll find that in the data sheet. And then it also tells you information about the pinout, so what the device is, so when you get the package part, where are the pins? So if you have something that looks like this, what are these pins? Which ones are inputs? Which ones are outputs? Which ones are power supply? How do you tell where <coughs> pin one is? Stuff like that. Then it's also going to give you information about the thermal characteristics. And it's also going to give you information about the part numbering scheme. Okay, so a data sheet typically will represent numerous different part numbers, each with different maybe pinouts, different uh, thermal characteristics and stuff like that. So <clears throat> it's going to give you information on how to order one. Okay, let's take a look uh, at, at a real data sheet and let's look at how some of the key features of this data sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a very common device, which is an inverter. Okay. So this is, a, this is an inverter from Texas Instruments, and this is the, the primary title on this is Hex Inverter. But it's a data sheet that covers these two kind of, kind of families, or two specific parts, which are SN54HC04 and SN74HC04. All of this does, you don't need to know what this means right now, but it's essentially this logic family called 74HC, and 54HC, and these are a group of parts which are designed to operate together. The O4 means it's an inverter, so there's other parts that exist that, like a 74HC08, which is, which is actually a different part that would work together with this particular inverter. Okay? So anyway, this, this is just kind of the, the group of parts that this data sheet will work across. So one of the first things you always see is the features of it. <clears throat> so this is just kind of the marketing uh, advertisement of what these things do. And these are, these are actually really important because it kind of gives you the, the synopsis, or synopsis of what this part does. So if you look at this, it's vol wide operating voltage range, 2 volts to 6 volts. What it's saying there is this is the range of power supply voltages that you can actually have on there. So this is the VCC. Outputs can drive up to 10 something LSTTL loads. So it's talking about how many other loads it can drive. So it's talking about when you have an output, it can drive up to 10 other loads. So that's, that's sometimes important. Low power consumption, it's talking about 20 microamps ICC. This right here, what they're talking about is this is the quiescent current. And the quiescent current, sometimes data sheets give it as IQ. Sometimes they give it as ICC. And this is where it becomes a little bit confusing because we've talked about a device that has a power supply uh, pin that is going to have current flowing in it that we call IVCC. Well, sometimes you, sometimes you see the data sheet called IVCC. Sometimes you see it called ICC. And then sometimes they call the IQescent current ICC. So it's a, a different terminology for, you know, different data sheets call it different things. One of the ways that you can tell which is which is that the quiescent current is always going to be very, very small. So notice that this is 20 microamps. So you know right there that that is a, that is a very small current for a particular part. When you look at things like what is IVCC max, that's going to be, for a part like this, it's going to be specified as something like 50 milliamps or 25 milliamps, something in the milliamp range, something that's orders of magnitudes larger than that. And if they gave you something like IVCC max is equal to 50 milliamps, you would know by looking at the order of magnitude on the current right there that they're not talking about the maximum quiescent current. They're actually talking about the current through the VCC pin because of just how large that current was. 
Okay, and so that's something you kind of get used to. They also give you the propagation delays 8 nanoseconds. It's talking about plus or minus 4 milliamps output drive. So that's talking about what they would recommend in terms of sourcing on an input. And then the input current of 1 microamp. So that's where uh, when you, we, what we discussed was this in, the inputs into the device have a very small amount of current, so one microamp. So you can see that one microamp relative to even the QSN current here is just tiny. Okay, so, the, so that's why we typically can ignore the input current into a digi. Next thing you might you see on here is uh, different package options. So this, this one actually has two different packages that it supports. One of them is this, it's called a dual inline package or a dip package. So it's two inline rows of pins. And it tells you the pin numbers, 1 through 14. Also gives you this little mark right here, which is the pin 1 indicator. <laughs> so when you actually part, put this part down, you know when you see this little cutout that pin 1 is down to the left of it. <clears throat> Then it also supports this other type of package right here, which is a small outline, <coughs> which supports four you know, pin, rows of pins on each of the sides. So these are the two, two types of packages that it'll support. And then the first thing they give you is some ordering information. So they talk about, for these inverters, <coughs> what packages they come in. And you notice that there's a whole bunch of different packages that are talking about PDIP, plastic dual inline package, small out, outline integrated circuit, uh, small outline package. So they just have all these different package technologies that are supported. They also have a couple different voltage ranges that are supported. And that's actually, that actually refers to the 74 and the 54. Now, how you read these part numbers, we'll, we cover that in a different video. But in general, the, the 74 is the commercial version, so it's a, a temperature range, which is a normal temperature range for an integrated circuit. And then 54 is the military, so it's a wider range of voltages. And you can also, it also gives you information about how the parts come. So when you order this, does it show up as in just a bag or does it show up in like a tube of parts or does it show up in a reel of parts? So these, these things become uh, of interest once you get your circuit design, you start manufacturing. Uh, you might say, well, I, want, I need to load these things and my automated load machine only takes a reels. It doesn't take tubes. So these things become important later. Okay. Let's take a look at the next thing that it talks about. It gives you the functional table for this. Now this, of course, is just an inverter, but it's telling you that the input that's denoted as A, and then you have an output which is denoted Y, and in between them, it's simply an inverter. So the reason that's important is because if you go back to the package itself, one of the things you notice is that there's more than one inverter on here. So this right here is an inverter, and then we call it 1A and 1Y. So that means that the 1 is the input and 2 is the output. Then you have 2A, 2Y, 3A, 3Y, 4A, 4Y, 5A, 5Y, and 6A, 6Y. So this has six inverters on it. That's why you call it a hex inverter. Notice also you have a power supply pin and you have a ground pin. So that's where they are. So this kind of pulls everything together that we've been talking about. Now this is obviously a very simple circuit, but that you, you always have, the data sheet always has to tell you what the circuit is actually doing. Okay, you're going to have a section which is always the maximum rating. So this is talking about where you, when you exceed these when you exceed these specifications, that's where you you damage the part. You cannot go more than that. So you're going to have power supply range. You can't have more than seven volts on this particular package. So once you go to eight volts, then it's going to it's going to blow up on, or smoke on you, melt. Then it's going to, you got some specifications on input clamp currents, output clamp currents. Con what, what we're really interested in, though, would be more like continuous output current. Now look at this. This is I.O., which is the output. So we had been kind of drawing it like this on a transmitter. So you have the I.O., and we're talking about it can source or it can sync. Well, if you think about continuous output current, 25 milliamps, plus or minus 25 milliamps. So that means on any given pin, it can source 25 and it can sync 25 milliamps. Now if you look at the VCC, you have plus or minus 50. So that means that the VCC pin up here can provide 50 milliamps and then you can also dump 
50 milliamps into the ground pin and and there you have it now here's what's of interest to this immediately so if you violate those then it's going to it's going to uh, damage the device one of the things you notice right away is that there's six inverters on here what would happen if you sourced the maximum amount of current possible through each and every output well you'd have 25 milliamps times six you would have 150 milliamps the reason that's a problem is because you would immediately violate the IVCC specification and you would damage the part so it's very easy when you start multiplying the currents on the outputs by the number of outputs to exceed the VCC and the ground current specification. So that's something you need to watch, watch for. Another very important thing here is that this is the maximum amount of current that you can have on the outputs, plus or minus 25 milliamps. But over here, they said plus or minus 4 milliamps output drive. So what this means is that this is the recommended, this is where they say if you drive at this, you're going to have the full lifetime of the part, you're going to have the specified uh, switching characteristics, and this is where you want to design for. But that doesn't mean you can't drive up to here, just you got to be aware that you're reducing the lifetime of the part. Okay, so let's take a look at, now let's move down to the recommended operating conditions, and this is where they specify the input voltages. So this is the range of input voltages that uh, this device will interpret as a high and will interpret as a low. Now, <clears throat> what they do here is they give it in, they give it first for the 54 and then also for the, the 74. And what they do is they, they have minimum, nominal, and maximum, but they don't give you the, the best case situation. So for example, let's just, let's not worry about the 54 right now. Let's just, let's just worry about the 74 because that's the commercial part. So when I look at the VIH input level, what they're talking about is you have a receiver and you have this range of voltages that are interpreted as a high and a low. So I'm going to draw this range here. This is the high. And we kind of know that you have this range called VIH max and you have VIH min. Well, notice that they don't give the max voltages because the max voltages, it's implied that in the best case, that's going to be equal to whatever your VCC was. So what they only give is the VIH minimum. Now, the VIH minimum, they give that for a different range of power supplies because these parts can actually be run off of a VCC of 2 volts all the way up to 6 volts. So they give you a sampling of the actual voltages that you would have. Now what do you do if you're not running your power supply at one of these voltages? It's a 2, 4.5, and 6. These are non-standard power supplies. So for a part like this, you'd typically run it on 2.5 or 3.4 or 5 volts. So if you really want to know what this, this minimum specification is, you have to do what they call interpolating the uh, the specifications. So what that would look like is you would simply plot these voltages on a little XY plot and then you could actually kind of interpolate what it would be. So here's an example of an interpolation. What I did is I, I took that, those specifications they give me for 2, 4.5, and 6 and I drew a straight line through it and then I extrapolated to say if I was running at 3.4 volts then my VIH min would be about 2.4 uh, if I was running 2.5, if I was running at 5 volts, I'd be sitting up at about 3.5. So that's how you kind of use those values from the data sheet to find out what your specification would be. They can't give it for each and every power supply <coughs> because you would just have too much information in there. So they leave it up to you to kind of figure out which is which. But notice that when you first look at these, this is missing. That's because that's the best case situation. So then this is where you want to find your VIH, your VIH specifications. Same thing if you look down here and do VIL, what they're talking about here is the specifications on the input for when you interpret it as a low. So you're going to have VIL max, and you're going to have VIL minimum. Well, notice they don't give you the minimum. The minimum is missing, and that's because that's the best case situation. So what they would assume here is that in the best case, the VIH, VIL min would be ground. <coughs> Over here, Again, they give you the specifications for a range of power supply voltages, and you have to interpret or you have to interpolate 
to find out which one would actually be best use for you. Okay? All right. This is the best case situation. Uh, the power supply voltage that they recommend is from 2 to 6 on here, so you have a range there. And then they give you this specification, which is VI and VO, and they're telling you that the inputs and outputs swing between 0, which is ground, all the way up to VCC. Okay, so that maps back to the uh, DC specifications. Then let's take a look at another specification which we've covered, which is the uh, output conditions. They call these the electrical characteristics. But what these are, these are the specifications for the transmitter. So now on the transmitter, if you remember, you're going to have, it's a range of voltages for when you're outputting a high and when you're outputting a low. And yet, so you have VOH and VOL. Again, they give it for uh, 74 series and a, and a 54. So let me cross off the let me cross off this 54, and we'll just focus on the 74. Again, you have different power supplies for what's going on here. Let's let's focus on VOH VOH for a second. So this specification right here is going to be VOH maximum, and this is going to be VOH minimum. So if I look over here, maximum is missing, and that's because the maximum, that's the best case situation. So that's assumed to be VCC, so they don't give it to you. VOH minimum is the worst case situation, so that's the spec you have here. Notice now, though, they, eat, they give you different values for different load conditions. So right here, they're going to tell you your voltage is going to change, and it might change considerably depending on how much current you're providing to the source. So if you have this, or if you have this, it depends how much current is flowing to, on what this output voltage is going to be. So if you look at the first one, you'd have IOH is 20 microamps, <clears throat> then they give you the power supplies. Notice that for a power supply of 6 volts, you get 5.9. So when you're pulling hardly any microamps or hardly any current, you basically get almost exactly what the power supply is. So you get Ideally, you'd have VCC, which is 6, the output 5.9, so it's very close to VCC. So when you're pulling little current, it doesn't really matter. Same thing here, 4.5 to 4.4, 2 to 1.9. So this works, so hardly any current on the output, the voltage is very close to your ideal situation. Look at what happens, though, when you start pulling higher amounts of current, so 4 milliamps. So here, if you have a power supply of 4.5, I'll do that in blue, 4.5, you're going to have an output of 3.84. So you start pulling a lot of current, all of a sudden this output on the worst case drops significantly from your ideal value. And you can see how much it drops when you look at, let's look at this one right here, so 4.5 power supply compared to this 4.5 power supply. And look at what happened. When I drew hardly any current, I almost had VCC right here. So it, everything was great. I pulled 4 milliamps. Look how much it dropped. It dropped almost 0.7 volts, or 0.6 to 0.7 volts. That's a lot different from when you were, weren't pulling very much current, where it was almost putting out, ideally, VCC. Okay, same thing. You, you see the same thing when you go to the 6 volt. So that's something to keep, keep in mind. The output voltage that you get, this VOH minimum, it really depends on how much current you're providing to the load. All right, and the reason it's negative is just the way that the, the current is defined to flow into the part. Okay, VOL. Again, VOL is the range of voltages for the low. So they, you have VO, VOL minimum, which they don't give because it's ideal. It's assumed to be ground. <laughs> then they give you VOH right here. So this is VO, or excuse me, v, VOL maximum. So that's what these ranges are right here. Okay. Notice right here you have also II, which is the input current for any of the inputs, and that's very small, so it's 1,000 nanoamps or 1 microamp. ICC is 20 microamps. Now here again, this is IQescent. And you say, well, how, how do I know that it was IQescent? And it was because it was 20 microamps, so it's very, very small. Relative to a specification we got over here, which was... Let's see, continuous output current through VCC right here, which was 50 milliamps. So that's how you knew that it was different. 
Okay, so then finally, the other specification that we've covered is going to be the switching characteristics. And you can see right here, you have propagation delay and you have transition time. So let's just put, look at propagation delay. Again, they give it to you across three different power supplies. And then you have the maximum. The minimum it would be ideally nothing, so they don't give you that. But notice that as the power supply goes up, the transition or the propagation delay drops. So that means as you have a higher power supply, the device just gets simply faster. If you weren't operating at one of these power supplies, again, you'd have to interpolate. Same thing with transition time. They give you three power supplies, and they give you these three numbers. Look at the transition time. It, once you go from 2 volts to 4.5, the transition time drops by almost a factor of 5. So it's, it speeds up significantly. Okay? Now, they only give transition time and prop, prop delay. So that means what they're saying is that T prop low to high is equal to T prop high to low. And over here they're saying T rise is equal to T fall. So that's why they only give one set of specs. Now when you measure them, they may be a little bit different, but they're close enough that they decided that we, they would just provide this one specification. So the data sheet is always the first place that you go for information about a digital circuit once you start designing.